So I had an opportunity to take a look at this Vico platform. And what's interesting is this, is that, um, you know, this is a really recent thing. They didn't used to have this start a free trial option. When, at the time when I actually was evaluating Vico, all they had was this book a demo. And so that's what I did. And so I, I recorded that demo, and which we will be seeing in a moment. And what I like about that, because out of all the other platforms, this was the only one that required me to book a demo. So when I finally did book a demo, uh, I realized just how valuable that was to have someone from the company ask me the pertinent questions about my e-commerce business so that when during the demo, they could highlight some of the, 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 the strengths and the features that are almost uniquely catered to helping me and my e-commerce business kind of like up level, okay? Whereas if you just do a trial, you it's kind of like you go in there and you have this entire buffet of different things that you could do and some may be relevant to you and some may not. And so this particular review is a recording of that demo and I think it's, I think it's important because it allows um, someone who is an expert behind to really truly highlight uh, the major components of it so that you don't miss the goodness behind or the strength behind the program itself. Um, I, I, I kind of like that approach because it, um, it allowed a representative to get to know you, ask questions and create that uh, deeper connection. So if this is something that uh, you would prefer to do, because if it is your business and you want to do it seriously, I uh, highly recommend at least booking a demo so you can talk to one of the reps and they can um, basically take you by the hand to go through the trial with you or go through a demo with you. And then you can trial it out after like that. Whereas if you just do the trial, then who knows what happens? I mean, there's, a, there's an overview button here and then there's now the start of free trial which is, like I said, brand new. This must have just started as I'm finishing up um, the uh, editing of this review. So, well, anyway, without any further ado, here is the recording of that demo. So, as I've said, my name is Mark Cadell. Uh, I'm in Austin, Texas, uh -huh. and I've been here quite a while. Um, I love it here. It's a great state. It's a great town. Uh, this is a picture of our fair city. Did you ever get this way? Oh, Austin? Often? Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, a couple of years ago, I went and spoke there to a room full of entrepreneurs about... Um, oh, really? What about, group was it? It was, a, it was a diversity conference. Oh, wow. And it was about diversity in the corporate marketplace. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. yeah so, so. Um, so you've seen this probably. Uh -huh. uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. I was blown away. I was like, wow. Oh, yeah, it's fun. So we, we office behind here. We're on the building behind that building. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. So, um, but the, but the company itself is located in Swansea, Wales. And I don't mm. know if you've ever been there, but you mm -hmm. should go. It's a, uh, I spent a month there recently and it's um, just it's a beautiful. Wonderful... I've been to Wales. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, you know where I'm talking about probably mm -hmm. to the coast there. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the, uh, our CEO, Matt Warren, who is here, you see, mm -hmm. um, he found it in 2013 and he has had two successful luxury watch retail businesses. And he was doing online retailing before, uh, before any of us were. And, uh, I think just through his struggles of doing it and, and, uh, just learning the hard way mm -hmm. he started Vico. And at this point, after all those years, uh, we average 1.5 billion inventory updates a year mm -hmm. and 31 million times a year, uh, items are picked, packed and shipped. So I tell you that, so you can see the, um, that you can trust us with your orders. That's really right. why I show this slide. Can you, know, I want you to build trust us. We have one uh, customer that puts um, a million orders a year through our system. So, wow, nice. um, yeah, so we want to make sure, you know, that we take them seriously, each one of each one of them. Right. Uh, this is how most people feel when they show up, uh, when they talk to me <laughs> and uh, you know, because it's, it's just nuts. And we feel this way a lot of days personally, because yeah. things are changing in our world and we're working to keep up with them and helping customers. Yeah. But our goal is to turn it into this, um, this sort of framework where Vico is at the core of your inventory management, uh, warehouse management, your order management, mm -hmm. and that our whole goal is that you can deliver the right item to the right person at the right time with exactly what they ordered. So you can get five-star reviews and grow your business. That's, that's our goal. 
And so then we, that's our core business. And then we, we integrate with all these others. So I was telling you about all these other integrations mm-hmm. uh, that we integrate with Amazon, Amazon FBA, uh, all that. Cool. And that's our team right there. There's Matt in the middle um, looking all fresh and there's everybody. <laughs> they really Good are team. a fun, they're a fun group of people and they really do care about helping, helping people like you. Yeah. Um, if you sign up, you get this, this team right here. I work with Vera a whole lot mm-hmm. uh, and she helps you step by step complete the process. And so it's just a, we don't give you a login and say, good luck. Uh, we set up a <laughs> meeting and we have trainings and we, we do a collaborative effort to get you onboarded and trained. So that's, that's it. Great. Yeah. So I hope yeah. that helps a little bit. Any questions about that? No, that's great because most of the time now I get why you want to, uh, uh, jump on and jump on a call versus just having me run through a trial because I, you know, without having that background in engineering that I have, I can't imagine someone who is coming from a brick and mortar and yeah. going, uh, <laughs> what do I do with this thing right here? Yeah. And there's a lot. And I, I love it. I love, you know, Shopify and, and so many of these companies, including ours is enabling entrepreneurs to keep the dream alive. I, yeah. I, it's really one of my favorite parts of my job is I get to talk to entrepreneurs every day and, and their dreams, you know, yeah. whether they're crazy dreams or good ones or bad ones, but right. we try to, we try to keep them alive. So We're both doing the same thing. That's great. Yeah, exactly. In different ways. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is a, um, a Shopify site that, that I made, uh, uh-huh. as, as a demonstration and I'm a big buddy Holly fan. So I just decided to hmm. brand it this way. So I just made up this brand, but okay. the reason I want to show you here real quick is in your case, it would be a WooCommerce site or Shopify, whatever y'all right. decide to do. Um, so these products right here are live on this site mm-hmm. and then they are directly connected uh, instantaneously with this instance of Vico. So you're now looking at the Vico um, side of this um, equation. Okay. Uh, so you just saw the front end, you know, with that and here's the back end. So nice. now I can start showing you around a little bit in that context. Um, so I can shut the, um, first of all, I'd just like to show you, <clears throat> The structure of it is built. You could just look over here, uh-huh. home, which is what we're looking at, and the dashboards. Right. <clears throat> excuse me, uh-huh. um, the order management systems, how we do orders, how we do returns, right. uh, the products, uh, you know, um, the listings of the products, the um, how you do purchase orders. Your mm-hmm. suppliers are all set up in here. We talked about suppliers, uh, how to stock take um, or to count um, your inventory to make sure it's accurate for reporting purposes. Uh, and price list if you're going to do wholesale pricing. Right. And then a lot of these reports, uh, sales reports, product reports. Uh, I would do want to show you this inventory forecast report, <clears throat> which I think a lot of people appreciate. But that's it. That's Vico right there. Is this wow. main goal in life is to bring everything in, your warehouses, your sales channels, um, and your products into a place that you can manage them. And no, don't ever, ever sell again. Don't undersell again. And uh, get more sleep. Circle. Yeah, no, I mean, the automa- <clears throat> so. I, I'm a big fan of systematization, yeah. automation, I mean, especially from the logistical side of things, because <clears throat> the way we were doing things, I mean, again, we've been around for over 10 years and stuff, you know, we went from, you know, the, the spreadsheet approach on yeah. everything and making different phone calls all day long just yeah. to handle the logistics <clears throat> side of things. And then, you know, over the last, you know, decade and a half, you know, <clears throat> we've you know, fine tune here and there, new technology, you know, I mean, I mean, you guys started in 2013. So yeah. by that time, we were already at least six to seven years into what we were, what we were doing. So, you know, had you guys been around since day one, it would have been fantastic. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. Well, the technology wasn't up to snuff yet at that point either. Boy, and, well, you know, cloud based. that are available out there. Walmart wasn't even online yet. <laughs> uh, isn't that you know? something? Yeah, Isn't that's something. It's well, amazing. It's well, amazing. think about how quick Amazon has done what they're doing. So Amazon's amazing. I remember when they were yeah. selling books, you know. Just books, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so this dashboard view, some people call it their coffee view, uh, is what they check out first thing in the morning. <laughs> While um, drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah. And you take a look, and these are the channels. This is kind of one visual example of the different channels. Uh-huh. Um, we have a wholesale channel set up here, a, a retail store. We have lots of our customers that might have one retail store. We're looking at um, helping one that has 86 retail stores, you know? Wow. Um, and so, but a lot of them just, they have maybe one little store. A lot of our customers have one store connected to their warehouse or yeah. more importantly than that, they do pop-up stores. Um, 
This is great. Yeah. Experiential marketing, experiential selling has kind of gotten uh-huh. big, I think, since uh-huh. kind of, I think it's kind of a reaction to the digital, you know, uh, pay-per-click and just people getting driven ads. I think people are showing up at festivals and they're showing up at trade shows and conferences mm-hmm. and they're open in little pop-up stores. So you can have a pop-up store inside of eco as one of your channels and it could be for an interesting event and you could allocate stock to that pop-up store. So it wow. doesn't, so you don't sell out of it while you're trying to sell it at the store. It doesn't sell out online. It's just like right. any other store, but people will like in the West coast, we do a lot of stuff with cannabis and vape and things like that. They do pop-up stores like crazy. Yeah. And so, huh. uh, so they'll just do pop-up stores every month and they are able to run it through the accounting and reporting as well as um, be able to see, was it worth it? Yeah. You know, what did we sell in the pop-up store? This is great because <clears throat> my digital marketing business, our niche market is to helping brick and mortars develop an online presence and business from yeah. their brick and mortar because they don't know how to do it. And this would be a fantastic tool to make sure that when they do make that leap, it is organized. It is mm-hmm. good. I mean, it is completely all managed in a, in a simple interface such as, you know, yeah, it, stuff. it does this, the store that we're, um, that we're talking to, we're in final negotiations with, um, um they were doing, um, things with them. For instance, they have a big warehouse that they ship mm-hmm. out of, but if it's not in the warehouse, then it'll ship out of one of their 86 stores. So, Vico helps them do that. Vico helps them go, oh, it's not in the warehouse. You know, it's not in the warehouse. We're integrated with their system. And then it will, at store number 34, the clerk there pops it open and says, oh, here's an order. I better fulfill. And she packs it up or he packs it up and nice. sends it out from store 64 instead of the warehouse. And so uh, there's a lot of things like that. And a lot of cool things happening out there that uh, help people do those type so of things. So it kind of brings it all together so that yeah. it's not all separate, even though it's the same same comp- same business, same brand, but it's well, not all separate. Like, And I think in your coaching business, I mean, you just mentioned something that I didn't want to overlook, like talking about brick and mortar people trying to figure out uh-huh. how to go online. But the opposite is true too. There's all these online businesses that don't know how to do in-person business because- huh they never learned it. They never learned how to right. do it. So I personally think that that's where these pop-up stores are happening because people oh, want this personal experience. So they right. go to South by Southwest and they they walk up to a booth and they see, here's a bunch of soaps or right. candles right. or CBD oil or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that brand can have some personal exposure, but never have a retail store. But right. And, and that's our whole thing is that <clears throat> to kind of save the whole brick and mortar space that the relevancy is that, instead of having the brick and mortar state be a dedicated sales channel, it, all, it also becomes a brand experience uh, Absolutely. platform. You know, Absolutely. You can't experience People. online. Yeah. yeah. So here's a, here's a live Etsy store, just so you uh-huh. can see it. And um, the, Etsy, eBay, uh, Amazon, self-fulfilled, Amazon FBA. Mm-hmm. Amazon FBA shows up a little different because this is basically a warehouse that is in our system that you can see what's in your Amazon warehouse. Um, but Walmart, uh, Jet, uh, all those type of marketplaces uh, could, could all be here. Okay. Uh, this is just a quick view of your orders, what's okay. happening with your orders. Here's the latest products um, that have been purchased, and you, know, and you can look at full reports there. This is a stock take count um, mm-hmm. that in, in old school days, uh, mm-hmm. and still people still do this, is they shut their – warehouse down. I remember when I was a kid, I worked at Dillard's um, department store. Uh-huh. And once a year, we worked for like a whole weekend counting uh-huh. every sock, every shirt in that whole yeah. store. Mm-hmm. And people still do it. They shut it down for a quarter. But there's, there's a cost associated with that. There's also some accuracy issues associated with that. But what our, sales. <laughs> what our stock take um, system does with our digital scanning is you're able to use our scanners uh, or an Android device and you can stock take during the week. So a lot of our customers will actually count their stock in a week. Uh, like they'll, the truck will leave at three o'clock, let's say UPS leaves, and the warehouse workers have another hour or two, and they just count a brand, or they count part of the warehouse. And then it shows up here, and mm. eventually you'll see it's 100% counted. So it's a whole different way of counting stock than closing right. down your, your deal. That's what, that, that's what that's about. It's just one of the functions of our digital Picking and packing in That's great. our warehouse, and then these are the POs. 
you know, POs that uh-huh. are due coming in. These are ones that are open, et cetera. So that's, that's the quick dashboard, you know, view that I think mm-hmm. helps you orient a little bit. Sure. Uh, this is when all the orders come in. So let's just say uh, you were selling on the, on the bamboo site. Um, mm-hmm. You could sort this, this whole piece on the, on the left in blue is all your different filter options to be able to look at different things, whether you want to see what's happening today mm-hmm. uh, or by like, let's just see what's just happening on the Shopify store or right. just on the wholesale store or just in the retail store or what's happening in the warehouse. I have four warehouses in here as a demo. So right. you can sort, you can sort these however, uh, but there's your orders. And so when you have an order come in, hopefully mm-hmm. you have a big old long line of them every day. <laughs> you might have one or two, but when they come in, uh, you can immediately go and to ship them or you can look in there. A lot of people will open it first, depending right. on, um, you know, what kind of business it is. Sometimes uh-huh. you have to triple check things, etc. Um, and they check it out. They see this. They want to make sure the price is right. Any notes they need to do, any internal notes that someone might have put in Good. there, uh, any customer notes that would have come from like Shopify that says something like uh, leave the package on the back door instead of the front door or something mm-hmm. like that, right? That <laughs> right. comes through. And then uh, and then you ship it, right? Nice. And so, um, but before that, and that's why I was asking about your fulfillment, if you mm-hmm. have some sort of fulfillment center or whatever, mm-hmm. is that you can also see what's been picked. So depending on how, like what kind of quantity at this point are you moving through just that bamboo site? How many orders oh. are going through there a month maybe? Oh God. Um, you know, it, it's, let's see. When I, I last recall, I mean, we're doing several hundred orders a month. Um, yeah. And depending on the season, sometimes it's, you know, it goes, it goes into the thousands because of just, especially Chinese New Year. I mean, yeah. So two to 300 up to the thousands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, good. So I don't know if you checked out our pricing page, but I'll jump over there in a minute because mm-hmm. I don't like to, um, to belabor that too long. Cause I think people are always wanting to know that. Sure. Uh, so I'll jump over there in a second. But yeah. the reason I'm asking you is because if you have two or 300 orders, you know, that's like 15 orders, you know, a day mm-hmm. on, on your slow months. Right. And then mm-hmm. you're, then you're really talking about sometimes maybe even uh, 50 or 60 a day right. could be coming in at times. So this dashboard will help not dashboard, but this view will actually let you see like, so you could sit in your comfy chair drinking coffee and mm-hmm. see if these were picked yet. And uh, you could see who's picking and what's picking. So with oh. our digital scanning system, you're able to see what the status is of these. So if they're not even picked and it's getting to be two o'clock, uh, I'd be nervous, right? Trucks right. are showing up at three and they're not even picked, much less right. packed. And so that's what this is. So across this right here is you have the order date, you have the status of the order, mm-hmm. exact order that I showed you how you could get into, the customer, uh, the default delivery method, which could be UPS, U, uh, USPS, it could mm-hmm. be FedEx, it mm-hmm. could be DHL, uh, any of that. Um, if it's paid for, if it's been picked Mm -hmm. and then if it's been shipped or not. And so this is at a glance for, let's say you weren't back in the warehouse fulfilling yourself. You would want to be looking at this during the day going, huh, it's going pretty good. looks like we're going to make the truck, you know, or, or I, Ooh, this is weird. Uh, this is a manager. What's happening? Yeah. This is out of stock or something. It'll it'll show up. Right. Right. And then, and then you can do a whole lot with these order tags that can be applied either automatically. or manually you can apply a tag mm, to some okay. order. Like this is a, you know, let's say you had on WooCommerce um, there, you maybe you had a plugin for fraud that would show fraud, you know, like if it's a different shipping address, then it is a billing address or something. Right. Sometimes it marks it as fraud. Well, that order can come through and it gets marked as fraud. So you will be able to see like, Oh, we got a fraud order. I need to check it out. I need to call this customer. I need to double check it. So it it helps you kind of organize around what's important. Uh, You could do all your, you could tag stuff FedEx uh, or next day, let's say next day AM deliveries. Mm -hmm. You really need to get right because somebody wanted it bad enough to pay all that money. So you could tag it that way automatically as it came in. And then in the warehouse on this picking dashboard, they would show up here. 
and the, uh, and the, the warehouse it. people would go, Oh, we got this many urgent ones. Or, oh, we got this many ones. fraud. We got, yeah, or we got UPS cause UPS comes at three and FedEx comes at four. So you could split them up that way. And got it. You know, but it gives the warehouse team a way to just like organize and keep moving in the right. Yeah. You know, so order. you can create some good SOPs or systems where you, yeah. know, you could be proactive about it versus reactionary, which is kind of yeah, ideally. how most businesses <laughs> start. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so that's, um, that's orders. And I'm just kind of burning on through this. Um, yeah, that's fine. I've got another appointment in a few minutes and I don't yeah. want to sh- no cut way. you short here. No so, way. um, so then here we are in products and these uh-huh. products you'll recognize from that very first uh, Americana living store here, mm-hmm. right? Here they are. Mm-hmm. And so this is your product view uh, and you can sort what's in stock. You can sort by brands. You can mm-hmm. sort what's in what warehouses or in what stores. So Makes sense. Um, yeah, you might want to know there. And then these are the inventory levels. Great. Uh, what's allocated for instance, like right. this is 50. That just means most likely there's a, wholesale order of, of, of 50 of these women boots. Oh, okay. Pre-allocated that, stuff. That aren't right, shipped orders. out yet. Yeah. yeah. So you can't sell more than that. So right. we know, yeah, or someone pulled them off, you could have allocated them to a pop-up store and said, right. I, want, I want to make sure we don't sell all these boots when I'm selling these at a pop-up store, they'd be allocated. Right. So that's another reason for them. And then in each one of these um, products, let's, let's take this boot one for a second. Inside of this, you're able to... Um, do a lot of settings as far as taxes, the weights, uh, uh, the, the links, everything to help shipping do its job best. Right. You can also allocate them to certain warehouses if you have more than one. But mm-hmm. this is the part I was going to show you. Like you could say, I never want to go below 20 pairs of these boots right. ever, right? Yeah. And so if that had happened, and let's say in this boot thing, let's say I never wanted to go below 150 Right. It would still say 113 here, but this would be red. This would be one of the alerts. Right. And you also get daily emails uh, from the system, daily emails that give you summaries that tell you you're running low. You're below your, you're below your minimum threshold of what you wanted to have in stock. Uh, And so it it helps you do that as well. So it's great. And that's what store. And so let's see what else we'll show you here. Purchase orders. um, Since we mentioned it, purchase orders and suppliers. Mm Mm-hmm. So these are some purchase orders that are open right here, but the system uh, helps you create a purchase order. You can right. make up your own purchase order numbers, or these can be sequential. Uh, this is one I made up, Arizona Wholesale Supply, so it's already in there. But you could pick from any of your uh, suppliers. And did you did you tell me how many suppliers you guys work? Oh, with? it fluctuates, but uh, okay. on average about three to five. Yeah. Yeah. So you could you could choose who you're going to order that from. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what warehouse it's going to ship to, right? right? Or if you want it to ship to a different address. When I told you there's this little workaround as far as drop shipping, that, that this, would be it. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's not perfect, but it works. It works. Yeah. Uh, what it, the problem is, um, you would have to like manually take care of the tracking number right. and make sure it got to the actual customer. But there's ways to do it if it's important. And then this email, email the supplier the purchase order. Um, so this, this, once you fill this out, it turns into um, a per- these are templates that are dynamically um, generated, populated, yeah. right? So yeah. here's a PO right here. So these are all available for you to modify. This is all dynamic data coming in that you can delete some or add some. Branded, of course, like I did here. Good. Um, but on this purchase order, uh, that's what would that's what would show right there. Uh, not all these lines because that's just a data field, but. Um, that's what we get emailed as a PDF to your supplier. And then it would be all the barcodes would be in there. And uh, nice. when they send it back to you, you could check the order based on uh, those barcodes. So, so the, the scanning system, and I can do that when I include a video, I'll show you the warehouse and the scanning oh, system, okay. a little five minute video, and it'll just really clear up how powerful it can be to Perfect. book your stock in from suppliers to make sure it's there uh, as well as counting the stock as well as picking it and stuff. Good. Um, and let's see I already, here. I already have a handful of clients. I know actually I, I, I might want to have them talk to you. About. Oh yeah. Would love yeah. to. Would love to. Uh, one less. Well, here's one quick thing I think is just really important. And then I'll see if you have any questions because I've been talking a lot. So, um, so a lot of people 
have trouble with inventory management. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's challenging. I mean, when you, when you really think about, um, you know, even if you just have three or four products in a store, mm-hmm. you're, you're trying to constantly gauge how much do I need to order to not, right. to not lose sales or how much, um, or to, to oversell or to go out of stock, which always is a bad customer experience, right? Mm-hmm. Something's out of stock. And so I think it becomes pretty maddening and it's a math problem that I don't think people need to do, uh, right. if they don't have to. Right. So this is what this module is for. It's for doing this real, real good, like approach to what do you need to order and when based mm-hmm. on data. So we'll look at previous sales because you could either do it by previous sales or like I showed you about the, um, um, the order levels. You could do it mm-hmm. by order levels, but most people find the benefit out of previous sales. So the previous sales, and let's just say, um, does, your, does your business spike? Does a bamboo, you said it spiked up to thousands during Chinese New Year and such? Yeah, so, certain certain right. holiday seasons. Yeah, yeah. So so you could do it over. You could do it over holiday season. Like I want to check, like you know, last July to August or last September to January, mm-hmm. and you could say based on the previous sales uh, during this time period, mm-hmm. you want how much inventory on the shelf. And I think this is the most important piece because right, we know inventory on the shelf is cash that you can't use for anything else. Right. And, and it might go bad. It might not sell. It might go out of fashion. You know, you don't know what's going to happen with it, but you know, there's no money to do PPC advertising. There's no money yeah. to give your guys a bonus. It's all sitting on the shelf. So you want as little on the shelf as you can. Right. And at the same time, you don't want to run out. So you say, I'm comfortable with four days yeah. of inventory. And so when you pick, I want four days of inventory based on this sale. Right. Uh, this is telling me, this duck boots right here, we need to order six of them. Mm-hmm. If I said, you know what, uh, based on the last year or whatever, mm-hmm. I really want, I want eight weeks on the shelf. I got to order 30 or five of them. Right. So, awesome. and, and, and yeah, you could have all sorts of your products up there doing the same thing. The and you do it over the are, course of multiple years too, right? I oh mean, you- yeah, yeah, yeah. So we help people. Uh, I think the last one we did was, last one I did with my colleague Vera, we did imported like eight years of sales data. Wow. Through CSV. And so you have it there to be able to make these calculations with. And then you can raise purchase orders from here, et cetera. So I thought that was important because it's one of the things that that gets small businesses is they put too much cash on the shelf and can't operate or they don't have enough on there and they get bad reviews and they go out of, you know. Well, we have the same challenge with our family restaurants where we can't overstock in the fridge because it goes Mm -hmm. bad. Oh, man. I think everyone should work in a restaurant for that very reason. Yeah. Because you learn inventory management super fast in a restaurant. Oh, you have to otherwise. I mean, yeah. it's not even stuff that you can just sit there and let collect dust. It just no. goes bad. It's no. just literally well, nobody make, could use it. You can't even sell oh, it. You can't even dump it. Well, we make a, well, my mom made stew out of it. That's how we got it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, but we can't sell stew at a restaurant that's using the ingredients. <laughs> that's, that's not on the menu. <laughs> the stew special every Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, so uh, in this last little gear icon, just to show you. Um, yeah. It is where a lot of the setup is where you got it, where you set your shipping up, you put in your carriers, you put in your credentials mm-hmm. and logins. Um, you can set up this. You'll find this interesting coming from your background. Mm-hmm. This is the part you were talking about, the automated part, but you yeah. can set up shipping rules and okay. or order tagging rules. So you might you say when an order is created, Boom. if it is to say, if any of these happen, but let's just say the total price is greater than um, let's say five hundred dollars. Okay. Right. All of a sudden, that's a pretty good customer for you guys, probably. Right. Decent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then, then I want that thing to go at no cost. I want it to go FedEx, you know, and I want it to go, you know, second day or overnight or whatever I want to do. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Um, Express saver. Let's call it. And then, um, and then you can do these uh, printing templates and the ones I showed you, remember that whole page of printing templates, Mm -hmm. you could say, I want to um, do an invoice or I want to do a gift card. Like you could use that dynamic data in there to say, dear Mm so-and-so whoever bought it and dynamically say, dear so-and-so thanks so much for your order. And it could be a really nice, beautifully designed card that would print out the same time you're printing out the invoice. It would print out a laser printer. It goes Uh in the package 
all that thing happens. So you don't have to train a whole bunch of warehouse workers when to do what it just starts right. printing out and they know what to do. Uh, but packing slips and all that kind of stuff can right. come out. So the order rules, um, and that's where the order rules can, uh, the tagging can be applied to. You can apply tags to certain businesses like, or mm. certain things like if it's a FedEx, then it gets tagged by FedEx. And that's what I was showing you over here. Then under this dashboard, it shows up that we got so many FedEx orders. Got it. That's where that tagging and rules base come in. Right. So anyway, right. I thought you might find that interesting. Yeah, you can streamline that. Is there a yeah. synchronization with like uh, CRMs and email management systems? And No, you know, the last one that I did was MailChimp and they did it through uh, Zapier. Zapier, okay. Yeah, yeah uh, but I wouldn't say, you know, like there is a, a fresh desk uh, is one kind uh -huh. of a, uh, help desk that that we integrate with. So there are developers out there that have developed connections. Those right. are available, just like on Shopify. You know, right. like a, like uh, WordPress, same thing, right? Just tons of development yeah. things you mm -hmm. can use. So there's lots of things like that that are possible okay. to integrate with. Um, but it's not a CRM per se itself. It would you would want to manage your overall CRM in a place. And, um, and like I said, open API, if you really wanted to do something a little more yeah. elaborate, can be connected. So yeah, I'm a big fan of like when things happen that there's like a full blown automation sequence and that human beings get involved just to make sure like the, the flow is happening. And so I like mm -hmm. a lot of what's going on here in terms of being, being able to basically code in AI, you know, artificial intelligence yeah. in terms of how it all works. So, yeah. So, um, you can go to, um, Tavico.com slash pricing. It's right on the website. Super mm -hmm. easy to find. Um, we want to be, you'll see it right up here at the top of all that. So it's drag built. Them. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course we want you to drag because when you drag it, the price goes up. Right. Uh, <laughs> but, but um, so these are in 500 order increments. Okay. And so there's kind of, uh, and y'all are selling anything on Amazon at the moment or no? Yeah. On FBA or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a, there's another uh, FBA slider here. That's minimal, but it's okay. important. So, so let's take your slowest um, months. I think we're under 500, right? Mm -hmm. If you write us a check at the front end of a year commitment, mm -hmm. this is what it would basically come out. These three tiers and right. the three tiers all include different things. So in this highest one, I'll start there. It includes all the digital things we talked about, like being able to have a scanner gun that, oh, cool. to, to mm -hmm. pick and pack and everything. And um, it includes all the technology for that. The scanner gun, you can either buy from us or you can use an, any Android device like a phone or a tablet to do that. Right. Okay. Uh, it's the same Android software uh, and it's real strong. You could download it just now on the store and okay. you could take a look at it. So, um, but, so that's that tier and it also comes with uh, wholesaling, are y'all doing any wholesale? Uh, small, small amounts. Okay. Not so that's, so the biggest, the biggest thing you're going to get here is, is that digital picking and packing and efficiency in your orders and accuracy. It's very difficult. I'll send you the video. You'll see mm -hmm. it's very difficult for a $12 an hour person to make a mistake with our scanner. Right. Okay. Right. Good. Good. It just is. I mean, I hate to put it that way, but sometimes we have to hire 15 or 16 or $17 an hour people yeah. because we don't have the scanner because, right. because you just, some people just have this institutional knowledge. They have intuition. They know where everything is. They've been there a while right. and you pay them well enough and there's nothing wrong with people paying them like that, but to have the flexibility to have the technology to help provide some efficiency yep. and spend your other money somewhere else in management or whatever, yep. but, but I'll send you that video. You'll see it's, okay. it's, it makes it difficult to, to, to do it wrong. Makes it that's, scalable. Goal. that's how, it, what I like. Yeah, about it. it makes it exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then this, the second tier down here, so you can see if, and this is the cheaper, if you go by the month, it's 20% more. So you can see right. the price toggle. Got but, it. um, so this one has much of what I told you about the, uh, the forecasting. So it includes that forecasting uh, cool. returns management, uh, and the user permission, I didn't show you that, but and if you mm -hmm. if you have different levels or different people in your organization, even four or five, and you don't want some of them to have certain access to accidentally or on purposely mm -hmm. change things like pricing or mm -hmm. uh, have that certain access to things, 
there is a big um, selection that you can go in and assign users certain permissions. That comes in that one right there. Got it. Right. And then this one is the accelerator package. Mm -hmm. uh, it can uh, do all these integrations right here. Uh, it has two users, three sale channels. Mm -hmm. How many, how many sales channels did we count for you on this, on this one? Can this uh, one? Let me count them my head real quick. I mean, I think, I think we have at least five or six. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and these can be these, these, uh, okay. I'm making a note here. <clears throat> Multiple those Amazon can, marketplaces. Okay. Yeah. And so those can be added separately too. If you think, well, I really want the accelerator package. I think it's fine, but I need one more sales channel. We can sell you one Got more sales it. channel. Uh, and that's the difference too. So you see the users go up, the sales mm -hmm. channels go up mm -hmm. and then the features go up. So you would right. pay on those slow months. Uh, if you went annually, one of these three prices, mm -hmm. if you went monthly, uh, you know, you have to uh, give us a 30 day notice, you know, but that's all to terminate. Uh, those are your prices per Got month. It. So, but when you talked about thousands, how many thousands, 2000, mm -hmm. 3000. Yeah. You can say two. Okay, we'll say two. Those are the prices at 2000 if built monthly, mm -hmm. that same thing, uh, and here's annually. Now, the only thing I would do here is on FBA. How many FBA orders? <clears throat> uh, that's a good question. I don't know, actually. Well, all those numbers right there included 500. Got it. FBA orders. So if you're doing more than 500 FBA orders, but just watch how little it goes up. Yeah. Okay. You know, ten more dollars. Yeah. You know, ten more dollars for a thousand FBA orders. Got it. So that twenty six dollars though is in this price. Okay. Yeah. So th I just wanted you to know that that includes your FBA stuff as well. Gotcha. So and there's different ways you can do it. <clears throat> you could do an average. You know, you take an mm -hmm. average for your year, uh -huh. um, and do it that way. Uh, a lot of people do that because they have these big spikes and they don't mm -hmm. want to like mess with it once a year to change the prices. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can take averages and things like that. So, it. but that's it. D d does that pricing compared to everything that you're looking at uh, and does our functionality? Uh, does, are we in the game? Uh, yeah. With what you I mean, it, at? Well, I mean, yeah, it also depends on, while well, some of the other ones they're they're very much, they don't have the AI component. They don't have, some of the uh, forecasting stuff, it's basically, it's just a bucket for you to put everything in, you know, and of course it's cheaper. Um, yeah. This one also, because it sounds like you have a modular approach to the different packages and everything like that. Even if it's, it's like, it's not a one size fit all. It's like, I need, I don't know, uh, five channels, but I need one more user or whatever the case sure. may be. We <clears throat> sure. Make adjustments as necessary. I'll send you the link to this, which like I said, you can find on the price sheet, but I'll, I'll send you a link to that. I'll okay. send you a link to the video, this video. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll send you a couple more videos, one on the scanner in the warehouse. I think Great. you'll see the value there. Great. Um, and maybe one more, um, if there's something else, anything else you can think of that would help you? Mm. <clears throat> no, it's a lot. I mean, you went through a lot in very okay. little time. So obviously it's, you've done well, it. Well, so. <clears throat> and we'll spend more time, um, the process for me, uh, how I usually roll with it is um, once you decide pretty seriously, like, yeah, but there's pretty good chance we want to do this, but we would do a little deeper dive. Sure. We'd look uh, a little bit more. It's a little premature because you guys aren't even on WooCommerce yet, right? Uh, and it sounds like your warehouse situation isn't necessarily settled yet. Yeah, we're in the process uh, of tight, <clears throat> tightening everything up. So Yeah, so I mean, you could be close, but yeah. it's not like you're ready tomorrow. Um, yeah. But what I used to do is if if both of us feel like it's worth the investment, we go mm -hmm. into a little bit deeper dive and we look sure. at your workflows, like how do you actually ship now? Right. How, how do you pick stuff now? How do you right. purchase things now? And then we walk through it and I usually bring in uh, one of our implementation managers because uh, she's very, very deep into the tech and she's the one – actually cool. saw a picture of her that will show yeah. you exactly how we'll do it. And we make yeah. sure if that goes well, uh, then we get more information and then we create an SOW. If yeah. everyone, that's how, that's how it goes. So we don't rush it at the same time. Um, we, we take our time to make sure it's the right decision for everybody. Yeah, no. And I appreciate the, the more personal touch, the human touch component about it. Good. So that way it gives, it gives a sense of confidence because it's like, 
Oh, how do I implement all this stuff? Oh, we have an implementer. Okay, that's great. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. No, and she's really good. Yeah, she's really she's done hundreds of them. So, awesome. well, it's been wonderful talking to you. Uh, how how should we proceed after my email? Do you guys think you're yeah? 30, send out that email. Got, yeah, I'll talk to my I'll talk to my team members, and then we'll go over um, the I'll 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 show them the videos and everything, so we can okay. sit down and talk about it. Um, I like this a lot in terms of just kind of, I'm a bit, always a big fan of AI and be able to kind of predictability and just be able to um, streamline the flow. Mm-hmm. And that's been my biggest gripes about what we have going on. And so, sure. um, yeah, I think 30 days at least into allows okay. to kind of like weigh everything out. And then what I'll do is in the meantime, if I have anybody that I need, I, I would, I would like them to kind of, you know, meet you and kind of talk about, um, having their business on here, um, I will, I will yeah, I appreciate send that. that over as well. So that way you can talk to them too. I appreciate that. Hey, yeah. it's, it's been nice. Thank you uh, for spending time with me and yeah, thank you for I'll send you an email uh, before I leave work today. Perfect. All right. Have a good to. one. Thanks right, so much. You too. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye.